here. Uh, Y'all have been awesome. My wife and I, from the time we got here in Huntsville, this is our first time here. Uh, we just want to say thank you for the hospitality, yes. for the love, the compassion, and the commitment from this body of believers. So thank you so much. You. Today with me is my wonderful, beautiful wife, Moana. Uh, we've been married for 15 years. Yes. And, uh, Beautiful daughter Kyra, she's sitting right here in the front row. She didn't feel well today, and I've got my son as back in the uh, in the nursery. My daughter asked me. I, we were in San Antonio a couple weeks, and uh, I was doing a live television interview uh, in San Antonio, and they got an opportunity to see it. She said, "Daddy," she said, "When you're on TV next time, can you say my name?" <laughs> and I, said, I said, "All right, praise the Lord." But I thank God for them being here today and traveling with me because I think that's a testimony. Yes. Amen. That's a testimony. Amen. How would it look for me to be out talking about marriages and families and my people are at home Come figuring on. out when dad is going back home? Yeah. So I thank God for them yes. being able to travel with me and be yes. there with me and give a testimony yes. to what God is doing in our lives because yes. we are grateful. One of the things that I remember the most growing up was my relationship with my father. My father was a great man. About eight years old, man, I would see him. He used to work at a steel mill. And I'd see him coming home, and he used to wear these big old steel toe boots. And uh, he'd be walking home, and I'd see him at the top of the street, and I would race down to meet him. And at the top of the street, we would embrace. And then we'd take off and start running back. Yeah. But like I mentioned last night, that was, that was fantastic. It was just what I needed as a young boy. Someone to love me, someone to affirm me, someone to be there for me, to help me make decisions. Isn't that what we all want in the Father? Yes. Yes. Well, sooner or later, my dad started. He was a casual drinker. He went from casual drinking to heavy drinking. Went from heavy drinking to marijuana. From marijuana to cocaine, from cocaine to crack cocaine. I saw my dad slowly slip out of the hands of our family. And as a young man, I became angry. I said, how could he do this to us? My mother had five children. And we stayed in the house, very, very humble beginnings. We had a room in our house. We could see from one room to the other room. Just living, hey, how you doing? Know, my brother said we could play in the hole in the house. <laughs> see, we was in one of those situations where we were poor. We didn't know we were poor. We just thought that was the norm. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't been there before. I know. We're not going to engineer. Y'all been this way all your life. I know. <laughs> but man, when my dad left our family, that hurt me. <laughs> See, people can say what they want, saying, hey, you know what, I'm a dad, they'll be okay, and I can leave. Uh-huh. That hurts. Yes. When he left, I decided, in my mind, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out on the streets. I'm going to do the same thing he's done. So I got out, and I started drinking. I started smoking. I started doing everything that I could to feel the love and the affirmation that I was missing. And after some time, I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, I knew that I was going to jail. Dead, jail, dead, or on drugs, one of three was going to happen. And I was very close to all of them. So I left and I joined the Marine Corps after some time. And man, I found all that love and affirmation because the more I did, the more I got praised. The more I did, the more I got praised. And the, the, and the truth be told, guys, that's, a, that's the reason why a lot of us don't spend much time at home because we want that praise and affirmation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So you try to get it over here because it hadn't been done back here. Mm -hmm. oh, so I did everything with the best of my ability. I ran the fastest because I wanted to hear, hey, good job. You did a good job. You did a great job. But there was still something missing. There was something missing. So one day, my wife and I traveled back. We were stationed in Okinawa, Japan. We traveled back to Jacksonville, Florida, where my dad was living. And I go in the house and I see him at his lowest state. And if you know anybody that's on drugs, or if you've ever been on drugs, you know 
when they hit rock bottom, it's a bad sight to see. Mm -hmm. And my dad, I, I can remember like it was yesterday. I remember going in the house, knocking on the door. My dad coming to the coming to the door. You know, he was half naked and he was just standing there, probably about ninety to hundred pounds. I was like, man, mm -hmm. I can still smell the smell. You go over there, and there's nothing in the refrigerator. And I mean, they're just, I mean, they're just living, existing. So I see my dad and I say, Dad, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm just making it. No, I said, no. Do you know that you don't have to live like this? Do you know that there is a God in heaven who loves you and cares about you? Do you know that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the things that you're fighting against right now? And after we did that, we loved, we hugged each other, we embraced each other, we cried. He accepted Jesus Christ right there on that living day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And from that moment on, you, we started trying to repair our relationship. Yes. But it was almost like the rules were reversed. Yes. yes. Come on. He was asking me stuff like, what does scripture say about this? What does scripture say about this? So we start teaching and learning. And five years ago, my dad passed away. But we were able to reconcile that relationship. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. That's something that we all deal with. Unforgiveness. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Unforgiveness will hold you back. It'll do a number of things to you. Come on. Yeah. When you're harboring that, I see, it would have been easy for me to say, you know what? He didn't do anything for me. I ain't going to do nothing for him. I never knew him. I mean, I was he was there half the time, but he wasn't there all the time. I'm just going to do me. Come on. Come on. Isn't that what we hear? Yeah. I'm going to tend to my family. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to just let him do what he's doing. I'm not going to worry about asking for forgiveness. But that's not right. Hmm. Come on. That's not right. See, unforgiveness will do five things for you. Write these down. Unforgiveness will do five things to you. The first thing that it will make you do is deny God. Unforgiveness will make you deny God. And here's how it sounds. God, how could you allow this to happen to me? I'm just a child. How did you allow this car accident to happen? We were going to church. We were faithful. How could you allow this to happen to us? I paid my tithe. I did everything I was supposed to do. But this still happened to me. God, how could you do that? We start denying God. That's the first thing that happens. The second thing that starts happening, we start hurting others. You hurt me, so I'm going to hurt you. There was a woman, if you can remember back in the 90s, there was a woman who got AIDS. A very attractive woman. She started going around and sleeping with other guys and giving them AIDS. Wow. Wow. And when they finally caught her, they asked her why she did it. She says, because I want to hurt other people as much as they've hurt me. Wow. <laughs> Unforgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. It will do that. Yeah. Teach you to deny God first. Teach you to hurt others. Yeah. Thirdly, it's going to teach you to harbor unforgiveness in your heart. And we've all, we're all guilty of this. I forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget. <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all can laugh. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. I forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget. Right. Fourth thing, the inability to trust other people. Yeah. I've been hurt, so I'm not getting in another relationship. Hmm. I'm gonna sleep around, I'm gonna do all these things, I'm not getting in any other relationships. Come on. That's what unforgiveness will do to you. Yeah. Come on. Number five. Create health problems. Mm. You ever seen somebody stressed out, their hair coming out, they're trying to figure out what's going on, they're living in depression? You know why? Because they're unable to let go the problems that have been going on in their lives. Right. Unforgiveness. Right. 
All these things, scientists had linked depression and unforgiveness to health problems. Yes. You know why? Because God didn't intend for your body to operate in constant, in constant worry. He didn't create you to be like that. You were created in His image and in the likeness of God. So when we talk about issues like unforgiveness, our bodies are not equipped to handle it. So it starts breaking down. Come on. This is what God says about people who have been hurt. People have been hurt at home. People that have been hurt in the church. People have been hurt at work. This is what God says. In Psalms 147, verse 3, this is what it says. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Mm -hmm. oh. He heals a broken heart and binds up their wounds. Let me tell you what that looks like. I picture Jesus sitting at, sitting on a step, just like kind of like what we got right here. And I'm coming up, oh man, my head, my leg is hurting. He said, come on, come unto me. Sit right here. And he gently applying the sob of healing yes, yes, yes. to that. <sighs> man. Not re-injuring the wound. Come He's on. gently yes. come on. Come applying on. the saw of healing. Yeah. Yes. And he's gently wrapping it up. While at the same time looking me in my eyes saying it's going to be okay. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Amen. Praise God. That's the picture of a loving and compassion. Yes, God. it is. Yes, it is. Second thing he says is in Psalms 34, verse 18. If you're the one that's broken hearted today, this is what he says to you. Come on. The Lord is close. This is in Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the broken hearted mm -hmm. and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. wow. How many people need to get free? Amen. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I'm not allowing people, not letting them out of the prison that the enemy has trapped us in. Mm -hmm. Come on. I needed to get free of that. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because I thought about killing my dad mm. for the way he treated us. Mm. I was talking to a lady in our church and her husband got brutally murdered in a parking lot. In, her, in, in, in front of her face. She was a Christian at the time. Her unforgiveness was so strong she hired somebody to kill the guy that killed her husband. Mm. Wow. Mm. This is a Christian. Mm. She said, God convicted me. After, after going through that, God convicted me in such a way. She said, I can't do this. I cannot go on with this because the, the, the fear, the, the guilt is eating me alive. I can't forgive this guy for doing this. But she said, when I was able to forgive, the peace of God came over my mind. Yes. Yes. Kept me in him. Yes. And I was able to minister to that man. Yes. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Come on. You want to break some bonds in your family yes. and in your life? Yes. Seek unforgiveness. Yes. Yes. Seek unforgiveness. So how do you do that? Brother Ken, you don't understand. I've been going, I, I've gone through some some crazy stuff. My dad left us. I understand. Come on. You don't understand. He did this to my child. Listen, I probably haven't gone through it, but he understands. Amen. Amen. Right. He understands right. all of our problems. Yeah. But to Brother Ken, you don't understand how she treated me. I had to leave. You don't understand. Come he on. understands. That's right. The Bible says that he is close to the broken heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's close. Yes. Now, how do you go to that point where you're able to forgive and you're accepting God's plan for unforgiveness mm -hmm. for you? How do you do that? The hurt is sometimes unbearable, but God has issued us a plan. He's given it to us. This is what he said. The first thing that you have to do is you have to ask God for forgiveness yourself. Yes. Right. Yes. Whether you are the person that got hurt or you are the hurt earth. I don't even know if that's a word. Is that a word? <laughs> Amen. It works. It works. It works. Amen. It works. You have to ask God for forgiveness. That's right. Lord, would you please forgive me for harboring this hurt in my yes. heart? Lord, I've been hurt, but God, your word says you're close to the broken heart. Yes. Lord, help me to heal the wounds that I have in my yes. heart. Amen. Yes. yes. That's what he's telling us to do. Look at this. Go to Psalms 34, verse 5. Psalms 34, verse 5. Psalms 
Psalms 34, verse 9. This is what it says. He says, I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Believe it or not, it's sin. Listen to what else he says. 1 John 1, 9. You know this very well. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The two, the two words that are key in both of those particular verses are the two phrases. I confessed and he forgave. Amen. Amen. I confessed and he forgave. Yes. It's not conditional. I confessed Yes. And he forgave. Remember that. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen to what Nehemiah says about God. He says, but you are God of forgiveness. Yes. Gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, and you did not forsake them. He's talking about the children of Israel. Yeah. You didn't forsake them. Yeah. Even in their most rebellious state, you were still gracious and compassionate, filled with loving kindness. And that's how we have to be. Yes. We have to mimic the attitude of our Father. Right. Amen. 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 And this is one of the verses that I love. Oh, listen to this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Go ahead and turn there. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Colossians 2, 13 and 14. This is what it says. Having forgiven us all of our transgressions, having canceled out the debt consisting of decrees against us. How many people had something against them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me explain that to you. Let me break it down for you. Because this is what this really means. Because of your sin, our sin, the payment was death. The Bible says in Romans that the wages of sin is death, right. but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. Jesus Christ came and took that mm -hmm. that you deserved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Took it from you and nailed it to his cross. Right. Oh, man. Amen. See, wow. Thank you, Lord. a lot of people don't realize Thank you, Jesus. we're not deserving of death. Amen. We have broken God's commandments right. and Come His on. laws. Right. Come on. Make it right. Without Christ, we are nothing. That's Amen. Right. That's right. That's right. Nothing at all. Amen. And we owe Him all that we have. Everything that I got, I owe it to Him. Amen. Everything. Yes. My life, my family, everything. Including forgiveness. Yes. Forgiving other people. Come on, come on, right. come on. Man. So number one, we have to ask God for forgiveness. Number two, we need to offer forgiveness to those who have hurt us. Yes. Let me tell you a little story. I was in church a couple months ago, and uh, one of my responsibilities, I'm over the ushers, the greeters, the security, the hospitality, the bookstore, the, everything else as directed by the pastor. That's, I, that's everything else. And I was getting ready. There was a there was an area we had blocked off in our sanctuary for people that are coming in, and we don't want anybody to sit under the balcony. We try to push everybody to the front. And there was a lady. She came in, a member of our church for a very long time. She came in and she sat in one of those areas that had been roped off. Well, and she sat in one of those areas that were roped off. So they called me in. Ken, you need to come back here. I said, Okay, I got it. Come on. So I go back there and I say to the lady, I say, hey, how you doing, ma'am? Full of grace, compassion, and mercy. <laughs> so, how you doing? Man, you doing okay today? Very good. Oh, man. Listen, this area that you're sitting in, we're trying to push people closer to the front. If I can just get you moved to the front. Uh, I, got a, I got a seat waiting on you right now. Um, it'd be great. We're just trying to get everybody moved to the front. She said, Ken, I'm not going to move. I said, oh, well, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. She said, the music is too loud up there, and I just can't hear it. And I said, actually, I said, the music is louder back underneath the, 
underneath the balcony because the sound is trapped back here. She said, it's, I said, it's louder back here. She said, I don't care. She said, you know what? I move. But if you see my letter in the mail tomorrow, you'll know why I left. Boy, my flesh was like, you know what? I went back and I sat down in my seat and I'm still thinking about the whole, everything just kind of rolled through my mind. And I saw where she, we sat her down and put her in a, a nice place. And, but that night was communion night. <laughs> oh, you got to work it out. <laughs> I said, I got to make this right. I got to make this right. I said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I got to make it right. So I'm sitting in my chair. I'm sitting down front, sitting next to my wife. And I'm sitting there, my leg is just bouncing, I'm waiting. I'm saying, Lord, I gotta make this right. I can't, I can't take communion with this on my heart. I gotta do it. I said, Lord, just give me a window, something, an opening where I can go apologize. So the pastor said, Let us pray. I jumped up out of my seat. I ran around the church. And he had told everybody to pray, so I wouldn't care about who was looking, because if they were looking, they were disobedient anyway. So <laughs> And I got right down beside that lady right in the back, and I said, would you please forgive me? Mm. Come on. She said, okay, I'm sorry. I, I forgive you. Would you forgive me? Yeah. Wow. That's what forgiveness looks yeah. like. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Making every That's effort right. to make it right. Amen. That's right. That's That's it. It. That's I just want to be pleasing. That's right. Every effort to make it right. That's right. And then you don't say, this is, this is what you don't say. If I've wronged you, <laughs> yeah. when I wronged you. Yeah. You see, we try to play this game. If I've wronged you, no, we know we did wrong. We know. We know. You know you did wrong. When I wronged you, doing this, 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 and this, that wasn't Christ-like. Would you please forgive me? Even if I wasn't the one in error. That's I right. still got to go back and go. make it right between go. believers. There you go. There you Amen. go. Amen. 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 Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? Ephesians 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Let's see what this says. Here it is. Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven who? You. That's it. That's what God says about forgiveness. See, it hurts to hold that stuff and don't try to do it. God has already provided the platform for you to. For, for, to forgive other people. Right. Stephen, uh, Stephen Kendrick, one of the guys that worked on the movie, uh, he was one of the producers, he's one of the Kendrick brothers that worked on the movie. And he was sharing with me, he said, Ken, he said, um, he said, for a long time I never had a Facebook account. I was like, really? Okay. Um, he said, but I recently got one. And I was like, man, why is that? That's the last thing you want is another Facebook account. He was like, because there were some people that I had wronged in my past and I'm trying to make it right with them. Wow. Amen. Wow. He said, and the, one of the quickest ways to get in touch with people or find people is what? That's right. Yeah. This is a person that's seeking after the heart of God. Yes. Trying to make it right yes. with someone else. Yes. Isn't that awesome? That's yes. awesome. <laughs> you know what that does? That testifies to the grace and the things that God is doing in your own life that's and in your right. own heart. That's right. Because right. if a person sees that, they said, you know what? I want that same thing that's mm -hmm. here to be in my heart. I want to be able to forgive. That's good. And this is how you do it. Watch this. Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. This is what it says. The only way you can do it is by this. Let the word of Christ 
dwelling you richly in all wisdom, yes. teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. The only way you can do this, you allow the word of Christ to dwell in you richly. Yes. Yes. Come on. His words of wisdom to dwell in you. Yes. Yes. See, you can't ask for forgiveness. You ain't even reading the word. It's too hard. <laughs> it's too hard. Come you on. can't do that in the flesh. Mm. That's right. Yes. You have to have the Lord's Spirit in you to do that. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. You see that graveyard scene that you saw in Courageous? That was very real for me. That was very real for me. They said, Ken, we need you to cry. I said, bro, this all, hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get the flood yet. <laughs> because I remember all that stuff. I remember I remembered on the Friday nights when my dad would come home at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I remembered all that. And he would come home and as a, a 5 or 6 year old, I would hear my mom and my dad fighting, physical fighting. And you trying to break it up in the middle. I, I remember all that. And that hurt. But God told me, I have to learn how to forgive others like he forgave me. Amen? Amen. The third thing. Requesting forgiveness from those we have hurt. That's good. Mm -hmm. Requesting forgiveness from those we have hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. And this is what I was telling you about the lady. Five, Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers that thy brother has all against thee, leave thy gift there before the altar, and go that way. First, be reconciled to that brother and then come and offer that gift. Mm -hmm. Come on. You've got to do that. That's right, sure. You've got to do that. That's right. And some people here have been hurt so much in their past. Yes. Yeah, and maybe that person isn't around anymore. That's right. They've gone on to either be with the Lord or gone somewhere else. But you have to reconcile and make that thing right. <clears throat> And sometimes, you know how that looks? It's just like this in your living room. I'll put it back here so the people over here can see also. It's just like this. You sit down, and you're writing out a letter of all the pain and the hurt this person has caused you. And you're sitting down, and that person is in that chair. You hurt me when I was a child. All the pain and injury I felt as a child was unbearable. I knew that I couldn't make it. I felt that the world was coming down around me. But you know what? I forgive you. I forgive you for all the hurt and the pain that you caused me and my family. I pray today that the Lord will be with you. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to live right? You want to live in the favor of God? You want to live above, exceedingly, abundantly? Learn how to forgive. Yeah. Learn how to forgive. Yeah. See, you can say what you want. <laughs> the Bible says in Romans 12, 18, he says, as much as possible, as much lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. That's right. All men. You don't understand in this room. It doesn't say that. No exceptions. Right. As much as lies possible, much as possible within you, yeah. Yeah. that peaceably with all men. And I sense today that there are some people in here, you've been hurt. You've been pained and things have happened in your life and it's hard for you to go forward. Even in the songs that we're singing this morning, rejoice. It's hard for you to rejoice because you know in your heart of hearts, there's still, some that there's still some unanswered questions in your life. Some issues in your life that you must deal with today. God is bringing in your mind today. Don't allow this to be a day that you walk out and change. Hear the Lord's voice. And as they're coming and playing the music, I want you to, I want you to pray with me. And as we're praying, I want you to think about that relationship that has come undone or that relationship where somebody has pained you and hurt you. And after
after we finish, I want you to bring it to the altar. The Lord is saying today, you don't have to carry that anymore.